the phoenix, a mysterious creature that is believed to live for about 500 years before dying and rising again from its ashes, endowed with new life and vigor. Sitting atop the school crest of St. Anthony's Primary School, the phoenix symbolizes its motto, Crescit Yundo, meaning to grow as we advance. This is a spirit that has guided SAPS over the past 140 years, since its establishment by Father José Pedro Santa Ana de Cunha from the Catholic Portuguese Mission of Singapore. Unlike the SAPS of today, the school back then was known as St. Anna School and was located in a modest rented house on Middle Road. At the time, the school catered specially to those who could not afford an education and was open to both boys and girls. The first enrollment of six pupils enjoyed free tuition and were taught by Principal C.M.E. Buchanan with the assistance of Margaret Diaz and Mary Anna Ruggerly. In 1886, the school shifted to a larger building at the corner of Middle Road and Queen Street and adopted a new name in conjunction with the move, St. Anthony's Boys and Girls School. St. Anthony is a patron saint who is well known for giving bread to the poor. And uh, the priest uh, named the school St. Anthony because uh, the students were probably from the Waterloo Street area and they were the poor districts. Some of the students used to come to school with slippers, just slippers and no socks, no, no shoes. Just a year later, the school received notice that the government did not consent to the existence of a mixed school. At first, the school attempted to separate the boys from the girls, but this proved to be insufficient. Thus, in November 1893, under the suggestion of the school inspector, the school was split along gender lines to become St. Anthony's Boys' School and St. Anthony's Girls' School. The boys' school subsequently moved out of the building and into two old shop houses behind the parochial house. In 1926, the shop houses were demolished and replaced by a new three-story building, with a cost shared equally between the Portuguese mission and the government. The building was constructed with reinforced concrete, and a bronze statue of St. Anthony of Padua was placed on the top of it. The statue was later moved to the ground level and placed in front of an Angsana tree, which was believed to have stood in that part of the church grounds for almost a century. The school was subsequently expanded 25 years later with the addition of a fourth story, thus becoming the building that now stands along Middle Road and which has been gazetted for conservation. The bronze statue of St. Anthony, however, has since been removed and now stands on the school grounds of SAPS. By 1938, St. Anthony's had been established for close to 60 years, but it was nowhere near finished with its growth and evolution. In fact, one of its most significant milestones would happen just that October. The school was actually under the care of the Vicar General of the Portuguese Mission. And uh, sometime in October 1938, the Christian Brothers of Malaya signed the agreement with them to run the school. In January 1939, the school was formally taken over by the Christian Brothers of St. John Baptist de La Salle, thus redefining the identity of the school. I see the, the Antonian identity is passion, resilience and uh, renewal. And our La Salian values will be faith, service and community. They all support each other, or they are in congruence with each other. Faith, if you have the passion for students, you will believe in them. And you will never give up teaching the last, the lost, and the least of society. Resilience is to keep on giving, to, to keep on pushing ourselves further in giving service to others. Right? And a renewal is we have to renew our community also. And when we talk about renewal, we are talking about renewing our vision. Yeah? Our vision has to be inclusive. Giving service or teaching all regardless of race, religion, and particularly looking at how we can be brothers, sisters to each other. Change 
change, however, was not just happening at St. Anthony's, but all around the world. By the early 1940s, Japan had emerged as a great military power and was soon attacking its Asian neighbors. December 1941 marked the start of the Japanese occupation of Singapore. While St. Anthony's was allowed to continue functioning, it was forced to adopt the Japanese educational system. Even though the school building remained intact through the next three and a half years of occupation, deep scars were felt across the community. At that time, the Japanese were conscripting people for the River Kwai Railway. And uh, my brothers were of that age. So my father thought it wise to leave Singapore. Well, when we came back after the war, all the previous friends were already dispersed and we, we had no contact with each other. With determination and resilience, St. Anthony's walked through those dark and challenging days to continue on with its journey of growth. In 1954, some of St. Anthony's secondary classes were transferred to St. Joseph's Institution as the school's location at that time did not provide adequate laboratory and other specialized facilities. By 1961, all the secondary level classes had been transferred over and St. Anthony's Boys' School became purely a primary school. Yet despite the school's lack of facilities, it remains a place of fond memories for many former staff and students. For me, uh, way back in 1963, it, it's just like being like in a home. Felt very warm and welcome in that uh, situation, even though the school was so, so small and dark inside, but the atmosphere of the staff and the students was welcoming. And uh, I felt very at home with the principal, the students, the colleagues there. We were very limited, no field, no nothing. But we are all very happy there. At the back of the school, we had this assembly area. It's very small and all concrete. And that's where Auntie Margaret has a place there to sell all the drinks. We do the canteen. My father do the sales of drinks with cakes and bread and some tidbits. Many of the boys in those days are not very rich. So even they have money or no money, Auntie give me a drink, we will give them a drink. So that is why we know everybody there. In fact, we have been there for many decades. We were very happy there. You know, we, whatever we do, we share. We cook something at home and we bring it along. And the principal did the same thing. And we share our food. We were very happy together. And we did everything under the big Angzana tree, which is our trademark. <laughs> this is very big. Chenwe 萤火会，我们也在这边。In May 1992, the school was relocated to Bukit Batok and once again became a co-educational school. It was also given its present name, Saint Anthony's Primary School. We came up here to recce the place. You know, uh, we came up as a school. We walked around and looked at the place. You know, nice, big, new, modern to us. You know, you've got so much better facilities, you've got a field, you've got bigger classrooms, you've got bigger building, nice and bright, all the modern facilities. At that time, I didn't feel the necessity, I said, why should they want to move? But then, after being 
in this school with our new facilities, I saw the importance, yes. They needed to move on to a bigger premises, you know, and be free and the children also not to be cooped up, you know. Because the other side of Victoria said they really were cooped up. It is for the best, you know, better for the children, actually. We teachers can function anywhere, but for the children, they must have space. So as we move, the children can develop better. It is a necessary sacrifice. Even though it's a bit far from home, it's worth it for the children. The move to Bukit Batok did not mark the end of St. Anthony's growth, with various upgrading programs taking place over the years to enhance the school's infrastructure. Since relocation, we have also undergone quite a number of changes. First, it was the prime where we built new buildings and added new classrooms. And then the second change was to make our classrooms uh, computer ready. And then the last change, of course, now is the uh, building of the uh, indoor sports stadium. Due to the scale of these construction projects, SAPS made a temporary move to a holding site in Jurong East from 2013 to 2014, returning back in 2015, just in time for its 135th anniversary celebrations. Through the course of its extensive history, St. Anthony's has overcome various challenges and risen to become the school that it is today. This evolution, however, shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. The Antonian spirit is really about that, the passion and the desire to reach higher peaks of excellence, you know, and then of course, this Antonian spirit is symbolized by our flaming uh, phoenix, stability, you know, and resilience, the attitude of never say die. So whether we are faced with challenges or not, you know, we rise to it, we overcome it. The challenges faced by the school basically evolve over time and very much linked to the history of Singapore and the development of Singapore's education system. But I would say that uh, a school like St Anthony's, what distinguishes it from other schools uh, would be its uh, ethos. And its ethos derived from the fact that it is a Catholic mission school operated and owned by La Salle Brothers. It has also a very rich heritage and this can be seen from the pride that uh, Antonians past and present have of the school and the very strong family spirit that the school engenders. Things continue to evolve. My teachers and I, we really believe in doing the best for our children and helping them to be future ready. In the past, it used to be teacher talking all the time. But nowadays, you see that children use technology, they use tablets, iPads, computers. And really, all these changes are to help them to actually pick up the skills to be able to be future ready. So, if you look at education or the school, 140 years ago and now, I think it's very different in the way things are done, even in the emphasis, the skills that are taught. The 140th anniversary is a good time for us to remember the contributions that earlier badges of Antonians uh, have contributed to bring the school to what it is today and for us to really commit ourselves to keep the Antonian spirit alive and thriving so that the school will celebrate its uh, next 140th anniversary with pride and with a sense of uh, having fulfilled uh, its mission. I think moving forward as a school, we want to look at our children in terms of development of the whole child rather than you know only on academics. And we have been doing that and we have been quite successful in doing that and we want to continue to do that so that our children are able to contribute back to society, they are grounded in values and then of course you know they will be showing care for uh, others, especially the last, the lost and the least. Just like a phoenix, the spirit of St. Anthony's Primary School will continue to grow stronger with each passing day, evolving to meet the challenges of tomorrow and shining brighter with each new generation.